Kombi. And I want you to bear with me because of the beautiful accent that I have. And I'm also going to read because I only can speak four languages that originated from Africa, my mother tongue, and the few languages that we are supposed to talk while we are back in Africa. So I will read the English that I was forced to read and write. <laughs> I am honored to be here today with you. When I was sitting on the computer at my workplace around 11.30, my son, the second born, called me and said, Mommy, one of us is gone. I said, what do you mean, Daniel? He said, yeah, they've killed our brother. Can you, Mommy, quickly go and put it on Facebook? We want the world to know. I checked it out, and yes, it had happened. I had a bad night thinking about the killing of the late Alton Sterling, a tear-old, as a mother of sons. Suddenly, when I saw that video of Philado, the first thing on my mind was, yes, let me share with the world. Because it had just happened 24 hours after the first shooting. So I put it on my Facebook for the vigil to be today. And I'm so happy, I'm very happy that the Black Lives Matter had to come by my side and hold me. Here we stand together as one. I am so proud of everyone who made it here to be in solidarity with our neighbor in the South. Thank you again. Driving or walking while black, my only sin is my skin. What did I do to be black? We are always mistaken for some things, like clothes we wear. Maybe the affiliation, we are affiliated to the gang or political party, etc. In towns we live, Street, streets have rules. We face challenges of trying to master these rules. We have to learn to be alert to surrounding dangers. We face the level of inequalities, no longer sustainable, live our lives in vulnerability. Our traditions have been, have been to fight with the system. Since life of walking has its own rules, we all the time learn how to walk these streets. We are more removed from the city. Yes, we are yet to arrive. Since the shooting of the 18-year-old Michael Brown, that was the first visual that I did at the Strath Corner, uh, Hogan's Alley in 2014. I had 300 people who attended. And when we go back and look at what happened, he was killed by Darren Wilson, who was 28 then. This just adds more wounds and death, suffering and fear. The white police who killed this boy stayed in employment and voluntarily signed, resigned only for four months. N nearly four months after the shooting. He's a free American citizen today with no criminal record, no restrictions, no destruction in his life. Shame. 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 We people of African descent are still dreaming and searching for hope. We have to forge out our own and chart a clear... Oh, Harry. <laughs> a clear determining course of action in order to be more just in order to be more than just a mere footnote in world history it's up to black unity 
black solidarity to that action like a really tribe when we are under attack. We globally have been gripping with number of critical questions. The fundamental question confronting us since our enslavement and the colonization in territories held by USA government. To what ex extent can black people be the agent of instruments of their own liberation and history? This is clear that we are merely being the object of or attachment of someone else's project and history that only leads to this possible future. Why are our people being haunted and killed every 28 hours? Why don't black people seem not to matter to societies? What can and must we do? are not behind this. <laughs> I, I am lost, but let's, let's be together again. Why are our people being haunted and killed in every, every 28 hours? Why don't black people seem not to murder the societies? What can we do to end these attacks and liberate ourselves? We are still going on the basis of what we experienced. We were conditioned and we are still suffering from self-hate. Because of this self-hate, there was to be a teaching from the likes of Martin Luther King, Mandela and the rest, that would allow us to fall in love once again with ourselves and have self-respect. I know as well as you do that when fear and anger becomes collective, it becomes extremely dangerous and overwhelming. We need the courage to express ourselves even when the majority are going opposite directions. Because of change of direction, because a change of direction can only happen when there is a collective awakening. awakening. We realize that system was built to divide, weaken and destroy us. The more we unite, learn from each other, about who we really are and learn how we get there the more we will stand strong in unity yeah. there has been no war that our people have not fought and died on the front line there is no job that we have never done. No tax levied against us that we have never paid. And our freedom has always been conditional here. They keep telling, they keep telling us that we are free. Freedom is always coming and the year after. But that year after is a hassle. We have never seen democracy in America. All we have seen is hypocrisy. We don't see an American dreams. We only see experience. We only experience American nightmares. The world today suffer a lot, not only because violence and action of bad people, but also the silence and the inaction of you people. <coughs> if you will be silent, if you are not taking an action, you are as good. What happened of African descent all over the world. We are the people who never tell our own stories. 
Our story is told by Europe, America, the CNN, Radio Dojovel. We are not made to celebrate our own culture and history, but Hollywood culture. If we can start to begin to make a contribution, we should start to think. The simple question that I'm asking all of you, are we thinking? I am standing here today very proud to what is happening today. Don't be bored with me. I know you love my color. <laughs> I will just add on what Audrey Sige said to you today. I was crying in my house when I asked her to come and officiated this. I said, Audrey, come. She said, call me, I'm divided. I said, give me a minute, just come past there and go. She said, call me, don't pressure me. <laughs> I said, Audrey, you are my sister and I want you there. And then I put up the phone. I came late, so disappointed. I didn't know who was coming to do it. I got here, Audrey was on top of this stone I'm standing on. <laughs> Wherever you are, okay, Audrey. Any other at heart, thank you. Thank you for being there for us. This movement will continue. Honestly, like she said, if you are not taking any action, you are not helping us. If you are not taking any action, you are not being part of us. I have a lot to share. To share, say, Vancouver has been a city that was started by a black man who is nowhere to be seen. And if I'm lying to you, we have people here who can say it, that uh, Vancouver, the families that started Vancouver as a city were the families from Afri people of African descent. When I learned that, because when we arrive here, we are, we are told, go to Westminster, that is where you belong. That is where your church is. I don't know if they know they build it there or they're just asking us to go there. <laughs> the church that we built in 19, that we bought in 1917 in Vancouver on Hogan's Alley stands today as a house. A shame, a big shame to the city of Vancouver for not protecting that institution. I restored, I plus four more people of African descent, not the original who were born here because we can't get them. And I will never stand to wait until they come. I, will, I started, we restored the church. We are meeting at Strathcona Community Center every Sunday today at three, th at 3 to 5. We pay to stay there. It's restored. Why am I talking about the church today? I want you guys to go back in your computers and look at why I'm talking about this church today. <laughs> It was a community center for black people. It was a place that Jim Hendrix's grandmother bought. We bought with our own sweat. The boys worked on the railway line and they bought that church. It's no longer ours. We don't know where it is. No contribution was paid by white people. Nothing. The money was paid Today, by I'm standing here to say the church is back. <laughs> to 1922 to 1923 there was a, a trial by somebody Fred Deal he was a railroad porter who was charged by killing a Vancouver police constable Robert Macbeth yeah. that congregation the Fountain Chapel mobilized and insured the likelihood deal was rashly jacketed by police was accounted for in the verdict Consequently, the case was retried and the deal's origin death sentence was reduced to life imprisonment. 
So look at what that church did. Can we come together and have something? I want you guys to support us. When you see these girls doing something like this, they're not doing because they have money. They just came from universities. So they need your support and your prayers. And I want prayers from you to me and the rest. Thank you very much. And sorry, I took it.